with autism participate in every aspect of the community. This series will highlight some of these individuals, families, and community engagement projects. Come with us on a journey to meet people making a difference to build a more welcoming community. Welcome to the series, Autism in Your Community. I'm Patricia Rossi, and today I am joined by the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities at the University of South Florida. And this is my panel, and they're going to introduce themselves. I'm Shelton Gilliard. Pleased to meet you. I'm Melody Pla. Hi, Melody. I am, I am Diego Pla. Hi, Diego. So I'm starting with Shelton, Lucky Shelton today, and I wanted to ask you, who do you serve? Who does CARD serve and who do you fund? Um, CARD is a state-funded program okay. um, administered through the Department of Education um, aimed at providing direct assistance, technical assistance, resource and referral, mm -hmm. um, and also special projects for individuals and families impacted by autism spectrum disorders. Okay, and the children with ASD, do, do they find it more, is it more difficult for them to do physical activities and PE or simple things even working out? One of the hallmark characteristics associated with autism are repetitive movements, mm. um, non-functional movements. So some of these things can um, be problematic for children wanting to play team sports like t-ball or um, Golfing, for example, these things require the students to be still and active mm -hmm. um, so that they can pay attention uh, to the instructions. And these, um, some of the core characteristics associated with the diagnosis can be problematic for them in terms of accessing um, different types of physical activities. So not just team sports, but even recreational types of activities um, can be challenging. Um, for them in a lot of in a lot of different ways. And what is the most basic one that you see over and over? Would you say was something as simple as throwing ac accurately? What would you say it is? Uh, many students um, lack the motor planning, um, which would be throw the ball to the coach, for mm -hmm. example. Um, lack the ability to actually carry that very simple task out, and so it has to be taught to them. Um, in a discreet kind of way sometimes. Some students can do it very, very well, but other students have, have difficulty in that area. So that will be something that will be uh, a challenge but could be taught um, if it were done in a systematic kind of way. Wonderful. And what are the health care issues or concerns? Um, well, we know from some of the national statistics that um, uh, 17 percent of the U.S. population of children um, two to 19 years old are obese or overweight. Wow. Um, wow. And the literature also indicates that children on the spectrum are at increased risk mm. for overweight and obesity um, because of sedentary lifestyles mm. that um, uh, they oftentimes live, um, not being able to access traditional forms of physical activity, um, some of it's parental fear. Mm -hmm. um, and lack of community awareness and, mm. and being able to access traditional forms of physical activity. So all those things together um, make it a, a pretty complex uh, task to, to access something that's readily available in the community. That's what I was going to say next. Why does CARD think it's important to address these issues? If you had to say the top three, why is that so important to address it? Awareness is very important. Um, we, by making folks aware that um, uh, this population needs to be able to access their community, just like you and I, um, is is critical. There's still a lot of unknowns associated with the diagnosis, um, and so when we talk about living a healthy lifestyle, it's not just eating right, exercising, and those types of things. It's also about being able to have options within your community, being mm, able to yes. go to the movie theater, for example, and one of our other projects trains businesses so that our families and individuals impacted by autism can go to the movie theater and it be a successful um, 
situation for them to, to go and, and, and have that as an option. And as far as you have to walk, <laughs> every time I go to the movie yes. theater, I need a lunch just to get to the door. You and so, me both. <laughs> so you're, you're um, getting two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yes. Okay. Well, what are some projects, some health-related projects CARD is involved with? In recent years, we've engaged in different types of health-related um, projects, and we call, it, we call those special projects. Um, as they're not what we traditionally do on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the projects um, is the Autism Health and Wellness Symposium, and we developed that project um, in 2010. And what it was originally about was to bring awareness about these health-related topics. Okay. Um, we touched on issues such as feeding. We touched on issues such as general nutrition, sleep challenges, um, gastrointestinal issues that mm -hmm. a lot of our constituents were presenting as, as challenges um, and invited presenters in to share their expertise around that particular issue. Since then we've been successful in taking that particular event and hosting it in three of, the, of our other counties, uh, Polk County um, um, as well as, as Hillsboro wonderful. and Sarasota counties. Oh, wonderful. So we've taken that event and, and um, moved it about our region, about our catchment area um, with, with, with success. We, as, a, as another addition to that event, we also provide autism screenings. So folks may have some concerns about their child being at risk for autism. We've um, offered and um, provided autism screenings on site during that, that day so families can in a sense gain this level of expertise as well as address some of those initial concerns um, around um, the risk of autism being present with their child. Another um, that we've done is um, we've created uh, different types of print materials uh -huh. to raise awareness as well. Um, our director gives us great latitude with, with um, kind of bringing forth some of the concerns from our families, from our work with families like, like, uh, like the Pla, Pla family who's, who's here with us today and really kind of help us address these concerns uh, in a systematic way. But we, we were successful in creating um, a brochure that would be distributed to hospitals that would educate them about the core characteristics associated with autism and then also some, some just a, one or two strategies about how they can make the medical environment um, be a little bit more autism friendly. That just is um, all the difference in the world. Just yeah. one little step or two little steps, wouldn't you say, Melody? Yeah. Just yes. one or two things. Mm -hmm. um, what's been the impact of these projects as you're telling me on individuals, family, and the community? Um, it's, it's had a significant impact. Um, run, one, as I said, we've We've been able to, to be mobile with some of our special projects and take those projects and screenings and things like that to different communities that are off the beaten path, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We've brought the resources to folks that are in need of it. Oftentimes, it, they need it the most. Um, so it's had a significant impact in that we've been able to do that. Um, another project that we've done is um, this past summer we did a um, summer direct assistance project and, and as I said there's a lot of health related topic areas that impact this population. One of them is accessing and being physically active as we said um, a, a bit earlier and so we wanted to provide some of our constituents with functional um, physical activity yeah. um, during the summer months when there's not a whole lot going on, they're off their routines in terms of school, um, probably eating things that they traditionally wouldn't be eating. Like we do, yeah. Just like we do. <laughs> so yes. we, we, we set up a, a direct assistance project that was aimed at teaching some of the sports and fitness related mm. activities that a student would need to be successful in team sports. So we talked earlier about the, the uh, motor planning okay. um, that, that a student would need to be able to participate in t-ball the core strength that would be necessary to kick a soccer ball, for example. And so we set up a project in which they would be able to do that and coupled that with interactive gaming so that after they finished engaging in these types of specific sports training activities, they would then have access to uh, these interactive games, which consequently you know, is one of the reasons why 
the, the literature is what it is in terms of the uh, contributing factors of obesity, but we used it in a positive and made it such that the students would engage in um, the fitness training and then they would still have access to these interactive games that also required them to be physically active for the duration of the session. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, let's visit with Grant and his mom and see what's happening with them at the fitness lab. Welcome. We're here at the University of South Florida's Interactive Gaming Lab. We're joined today by Barbara Minnick and her son Grant. Um, we're going to have some fun today talking about healthy living, exercise, and fitness. Barbara, sometimes uh, autism can coexist with other types of chronic health conditions. Does Grant have any type of health conditions that um, have impacted him in any type of way over the course of? Yes, unfortunately, um, autism is an autoimmune uh, disorder. And type 1 diabetes, which is another, uh, for another autoimmune uh, disorder, is also what Grant has. He also has celiac disease, so it's actually, he's got three, the trifecta as we kind of call it. Um, so there are challenges that Grant deals with on a daily basis okay. that interact with the autism um, as well as the celiacs and the type 1. Okay. So managing his, his diabetes and that chronic health condition, um, how does... Um, uh, fitness and maintaining a healthy lifestyle play into? I think fitness that. is um, important for anyone, um, but mostly important for children who have special needs. My son would, um, it's a routine, so it's more of a therapy for him. Um, it's also important for his body uh, to be physically fit okay. um, because it impacts the diabetes, um, and then it also impacts the brain. Um, if you're able to organize that brain, he's able to function better. He's able to communicate better, which is really important. Well, he looks like he's having a great time on the interactive bike, having a preference for <laughs> video games already, Absolutely. and then attaching it to him having to engage in an exercise at the same time. Yes, he, he actually will tell you that he's gonna be a world famous video game player and be rich and famous. Do you think that there's a need for more types of programs um, that will give you and your family more access to physical fitness? And it actually takes a village to help children with special needs. So it takes com the business community. It takes resources from legislators. It takes schools. It takes parent involvement. And then it also takes organizations like yours, the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities, to actually come together to create a program that really helps children. And fitness is one of the ways that really will help them not only today, but develop life skills. The hardest part wasn't getting the diagnosis. It was what to do next. What's an IEP? Doctors? Specialists? I worry about my son's future. Autism? It all changed with one call to card. Direction and connection. The answers and resources. Training and technical assistance. Card's business program filled our tables and opened my mind to new customers. Guidance, resources, training. Card, our beacon of light. Welcome, we're here at the University of South Florida's Interactive Gaming Lab. My name is Shelton Gilliard. I'm a consultant with the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities. And we're joined here today with Melody Pla and her son, Diego. Uh, we're here at the Interactive Gaming Lab, which is a, a facility here at the campus of the University of South Florida. And we've tapped into something that uh, I think is very, very valuable. We're trying to increase physical activity for individuals and ch young children impacted by autism. And so, what we want to do is maximize something that a lot of our students already do very, very well, which are play interactive games. Um, they're in tune to technology, but also give them an opportunity to be physically active, as a lot of our students don't traditionally have access to um, team sports, um, uh, other types of traditional forms of physical activity. So we're here in this unique facility um, and uh, talking a little bit more about healthy living and what that means for our families impacted by autism. Um, Melody, um, traditionally, sometimes we've seen that uh, autism coexists um, with other types of chronic illnesses. 
medical conditions, things like that. Is, does Diego have any type of chronic illnesses or disabilities that other types of conditions that have impacted or made his autism symptoms? No, he has no other health concerns. He does have some feeding you know, sensitivities where he only eats specific foods. So that can impact a lot of his weight you know, and his physical health in that aspect. But it's not a, quote, condition or disorder. How important do you think uh, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, um, being able to gain access to your local t-ball team or your soccer team, how important do you think those types of things are for his development, um, for your family? How does that kind of fit into your lifestyle? Well, I think they're very important. Um, unfortunately, we have a hard time finding programs that, you know, when he was younger would fit his special needs. Okay. And eventually when he progressed to where he was emotionally ready to join Little League or, you know, the softball team, he had no fitness skills. Hmm. So the other children were more advanced and that made it, you know, an unenjoyable experience for him. Okay. So he has an interest but doesn't necessarily have the skill sets, the motor planning and, and coordination skills necessary to make him be successful in that particular activity. He does, he has a big interest and okay. he's very competitive. Okay, <laughs> very, very interesting. That's something that we don't traditionally talk about when we think about um, students impacted by autism and some of the symptoms that make life a little bit challenging. Um, I wanted to ask, do you think that there's a need for more programs that increase or, or create a greater access for different types of physical activity, um, physically active types of activities for students impacted by autism like Diego? Most definitely. Um, we're, we're getting ready to start junior high and eventually high school. Okay. And as you know, there's you know opportunities to join you know the, the football team or okay. play basketball. and that won't be possible if we can't develop those skills because it, it's just going to be, he's going to be very self-conscious and right. not want to participate. And I would imagine the issue of the motor planning and the strength necessary to be competitive in those types of sports at the exactly. middle school and high school level will become more of a challenge for him as he gets older. They will. There are a variety of different motor planning issues associated with the diagnosis of autism delayed coordination um, movements that are non-functional. Uh, we're here in the interactive gaming lab and one of the interactive games is called three kick. If you can think about a child with autism, sometimes whenever they're given instructions, the way that their minds work is that there sometimes is a delayed response to common instructions via at home or in a